Hello and welcome to this week's episode of The Good Dram Show with me, Chris Goodram. Okay, this week um, it's time to look at a distillery that I've not looked at before, well, with regards to uh, an episode of the show anyway, and um, so we're looking at the Cavalan range, or part of the range, we're looking at the the core range, I, I mean, the non-single cask bottling, shall we say, uh, the 40, well, not all 40, so, you know what I mean. We're not looking at the bloody expensive stuff. Um, although in saying that, the you know the standard sort of range isn't exactly what you would call cheap. Um, and um, so it's uh, it, it's it's time to look at uh, Taiwan. I mean, I've done Japan and all all the other sort of parts of the world, but uh, we're not we're not touched on Taiwan. It has to be said and. Uh, um, there's a still a lot of people that uh, don't realise that there are distilleries in Taiwan. Uh, like they don't realise that Japan makes whiskey and, and all, all this kind of thing in India and what have you. So it's obviously up to people like myself to um, introduce these whiskies to, to the customers and get, and get people to sort of talk about them and buy them and... Um, it's also the job of the uh, the distributors as well, so, and I would like to say a big thank you to Speciality Brands for the samples for today's tasting. Um, I think it's always good to kind of, um, shall we say, give a bit of a bit of a promotion to to the distributors because at the end of the day, um, brands like to know that the distributors are not just selling the whiskey. I mean, I know this from personal experience in, in the wine trade, um, that it's not just enough to sell the wine or sell the product. You have to get it out there to sort of, you know, on social media and needs to be seen in the best restaurants, best shops, yada, yada, yada. And um, you know, brands do change distributors, uh, um, some more than others, shall we say, if they feel like their, their distributors are maybe not sort of putting the legwork in. But uh, um, so, you know, to, to, to uh, the, uh, the Yan Shan Distillery, as it's named, um, your distributors are doing a nice job, shall we say. Anyway, um, so, so anyway, yes, Cavalan. Uh, Cavalan is the range, like I said, it's produced uh, at the Yan Shan Distillery in Taiwan, which was founded in 2005 by the King Car Food Group, um, hence one of the bottlings is called the King Car. Um, it was a, a collaboration between, uh, well, I say collaboration between the company and uh, Master Blender Ian Chang and the venerable, uh, or the, <laughs> and that's probably not the right word to say venerable, as, as, as the poor chap is now dead, but uh, um, the, the very influential, I think that's probably a better way of saying it, Dr. Jim Swan, um, who, uh, well, Mr. Whiskey, when it came to, you know, you wanted a new distillery and you called on his expertise, and he certainly had an awful lot of it, but anyway. So they built the distillery. Uh, initially, uh, the uh, the distillery was well, I say relatively small. I mean, it had two two pairs of stills uh, with a capacity of about one and a half liters. So we're not not talking really small, but uh, um, medium sized, I guess. Um, the first spirit flowed out of said stills in uh, March of 2016, and the first release the Cavalang single malt classic was released in 2008 now uh, you would imagine that's a bit on the, the the quick side but bear in mind that Taiwan like India and Australia well it's certainly India anyway it's it's a hot country uh, I believe temperatures can reach somewhere in the region of 40 42 degrees at the top of their warehouses I mean and you know your angel share apparently is um, around about fifteen percent. So let's <laughs> you, 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 your products, your, your, your whiskey is not going to hang around an awful lot. And uh, like um, like uh, Amrit and Paul John, it obviously matures pretty quickly. And you know, so you can get it out and get it in the bottle in a relatively short period of time. The um, uh, the, the the process is is you know classic whiskey processed uh, 60 to 72 hour fermentation uh, for the wort which is re reasonably long um, and originally the, the, the cut point in the uh, distillation was at uh, 72 to 78 but apparently they dropped it to um, 65 to 55 um, now I'm assuming that uh, partly this is to do with evaporation um, and, and 
the fact that in hot, hotter climates uh, you're losing water content so although you're keeping the alcohol and in some instances the alcohol content technically rises um, so losing sort of like you know that the alcohol is not going to be a, an issue for them and I suppose basically uh, it allows them to sort of um, get it get it bottled without sort of having to uh, um, cut it too much so that's essentially a, a very very brief rundown of the of the distillery like I said uh, if you want more information they've got a very good website lots of information about the history and etc uh, etc et and um, yeah so let's uh, let's just have a look at uh, today's range then shall we you said I could walk on water. Okay, so we're going to kick off with the Cavalan Classic. It's bottled at 46%. It was, like I said, it was their first release back in 2008. And it's one of those whiskies that I say to customers on paper really shouldn't work. It is an amazing amount of casks that they use in it. And this is one thing you have to know about uh, the Anshan Distillery is that they love their wood and they use an inordinate amount of different casks. I mean, so basically your classic is basically fresh and refill bourbon and fresh and refill sherry. It's also red and white wine casks as well. And you're thinking, that's got to be a complete mess. But anyway, let's see when we actually get round to tasting it. Uh, the next one we'll be looking at is uh, the King Car uh, conductor now again another thing you'll notice about uh, a lot of the the range is that the reference to orchestras and all that kind of stuff and um, uh, I'm guessing that they're, they're basically trying to say look you know we, we make a harmonious whiskey it's like a you know, like an orchestra we're putting pieces together and all that kind of stuff and well you, yeah, you can't argue you with that um, this particular bottling was first released in 2011, it's bottled at 46% and was kind of an upgraded version, I suppose, uh, or so they kind of say, of the classic. So, um, similar cast types, uh, but a little bit more alcohol and, and probably, you know, a selection of, um, of casks that maybe show a little bit more complexity and uh, what have you, one would imagine. The third bottling we'll be looking at is uh, the ex Bourbon Oak. Um, now, the, as you probably know, Cavalan produce a range of single cast bottlings which they call the Solist. Uh, and they do uh, an ex Bourbon, they do um, uh, an ex Sherry, they do an ex uh, Wine Cask, which incidentally was 2015's World Whiskey of the Year. So, got to be doing something right. Now, apparently, this is the same casks that kind of go into the Solist, but it's just kind of like saying, well, you know, we mature completely, you know, in American oak and they're the same cast that go into each bottling. You know, it's a bit of a misconception there, I think. The only difference is that the Solist is single casks, um, obviously bottled at cast strength, where this is um, uh, new and refill American oak casks and bottled at 46%. So it's a, a, a vatting thereof. Yes, you can argue that some of those casts will obviously become the solace, but uh, like I said, I think it's you, you're stretching things a little bit there. But anyway, we shall get to see, because I, I must admit that the solace range, um, I, I love the bourbon cask. Uh, it, it's the, it just shows a, a lovely purity, and it's not cheap, the three figures, and uh, it's certainly my favourite of the solace bottling. So we shall see what that one's like. Uh, the next bottling we're looking at is called uh, the Podium. Now, um, this again is pretty much uh, along the same lines as the X Bourbon. It's uh, new and refill American oak. Um, whether that basically means uh, American oak casks as opposed to bourbon, X Bourbon casks, I don't honestly know, but uh, obviously by making a distinction, one would imagine that that is the case. That, uh, like the uh, the ex Bourbon, was uh, first released in 2012. And finally, we're going to finish off with the uh, Concert Master, which was first released in 2009. Uh, initially, it's uh, aged in uh, ex Bourbon cast and finished in port. Um, don't know for how long. Well, certainly the, that uh, information was not readily available but uh, uh, looking at judging at the colour I can't imagine the port finish is too long 
uh, as it certainly doesn't have that sort of classic kind of reddish hue from uh, sort of extended port maturation. But um, there you have it. That's today's uh, little lineup. I think it's just going to be really, really interesting. Like I said, I, I certainly am a big fan of, of what uh, what the distiller is doing. So um, let's see what uh, what their whiskey's like. Then, shall we? I'm not all that you see. Right, okay, so let's kick off with the classic. Uh, let's see what the nose gives us on this. Now, that's a lovely nose. Um, I mean, when you think about it, all these different cast types, uh, it should be a complete and utter mess. This, you know, it, it's it's a real testament to, uh, to, to the master blender at, um, at the Anshan Distillery that it's crafted something that, that shows off each individual cast type. I mean, I, I don't get a huge amount of the white wine, but you can certainly certainly get the vanilla from the, the American oak. You certainly get a little bit of dried fruit from the sherry. There's also some barley notes, a little bit of honey, um, a touch of, of spicy, winey red fruits as well. I mean, that is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, that is a lovely nose. It is balanced, it's harmonious. And it's just such a complete and utter surprise. Um, and this is uh, this is probably well, this is one of of of, uh, of the of my favourite um, Asian whisky, should we say? And certainly, you know, I try and get customers to try it because it's absolutely brilliant, absolutely brilliant, lovely nose. Um, like I said, harmonious, balanced. Mm. Let's see what Pal gives. Mm, that's a lovely spicy red fruity finish. Kicks off with the American oak, the barley, the vanilla, moves into um, into the sherry so you get a little bit of dried fruit but not too much. Again it's all very harmonious and and, and pretty much centered around the sort of like the barley character and the um, and the vanilla. Uh, that's certainly the, 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 the most um, prominent characteristic of, of, uh, of the whiskey. Maybe it could have been done with being bottled at a slightly higher ABV, maybe 46, but it's still got um, a lovely spiciness and there's enough kick on the finish to sort of like, you know, give it, um, emphasise those spices. So I think, you know, this is an absolutely gorgeous whiskey and certainly uh, one of my favourites. So um, good stuff. Right, okay, so let's move on to uh, the King Car Conductor. Like I said, this is supposedly an uprated version of the classic. So, um, if the classic was good, which it was, this should be even better, theoretically. So, let's have a look. Let's see what those is. It's dustier. It feels like it's a little bit more mature than, than the classic. Um, again... Uh, it's it's quite American oat. Um, there's some pleasant barley. Not getting so much in the way of, of, of sherry's sort of dried fruit. There's a little bit of, of wininess, a little bit of red fruit. It's it's dense. It's kind of quite malty. Um, I, I think it lacks a little bit of the freshness of, of possibly the um, the classic, but. Yeah, I mean, it's got a it's got a good depth to it. You, you can't argue with that. Um, but it just it just it's kind of just lacking something, if you see what I mean. Certainly, after you've tasted the classic, um, this just doesn't feel like an upgraded version of the classic to me. Although you know, it's a it's a good whiskey. I mean, don't get me wrong about the the quality of the whiskey. It just it's just, like I say, it's just, just missing something somewhere. Anyway, let's see what the power does. It 
it's a little bit more sherry on the palate in actual fact certainly it kind of quite dominates the mid palate and the finish like the nose it's malty it's deep it's chunkier um, it and again it just seems to just lack the elegance maybe of the um, of the classic it doesn't quite have that lightness that top note I mean it's yes it's got some lovely depth to it it's got some barley character it's chunky but it just it's a bit a, a little bit simple um, it's kind of like half an orchestra I suppose it's like kind of like missing your violins I, I, I guess if you want to use a, an orchestral um, kind of analogy and um, it's all brass and tubers and stuff if you see what I mean not not that I'm exactly sort of like an expert when it comes to classical music um, but anyway it, it doesn't excite me as much as what the classic does it's certainly a good whiskey there's there's uh, uh, no problem with that whatsoever but kind of calling it an upgraded version of the classic to me you, uh, you'd expect a little bit more but um, that's that's just my personal opinion Right, okay, so let's move on to the X Bourbon. Let's see what the nose gives us on this. Well, yep, there's plenty of bourbon there. It is a hugely oaky nose. Um, loads of vanilla. I'm getting almost kind of um, sweet um, corn-like notes. Maybe a little bit of banana. Um, it's kind of like a... Just a, I think in my kind of tasting notes, I said you can't quite see the wood for the trees, and um, maybe it's because the it's forty six percent as opposed to being a cast strength. The extra alcohol maybe just kind of um, takes the edge off the um, off the overt oak character. Because certainly the uh, the, the solist uh, ex bourbon is is probably my, the best. Well, in my personal opinion, the best bottling that they do. Um, and uh, it just has a sort of freshness whereas this is just you know, I'm just getting too much oak um, and it, it just feels a little bit unbalanced this has a bit of barley and if you sort of sniff hard enough you get a little bit of citrus um, but my god that oak is just that's huge so it's kind of like I said it's now getting quite toffied as well so um, I mean yeah if you, if you like sort of overly oaked whiskies then well you know this is certainly up your street but for me again I keep coming back to the, to the classic and that just that lovely harmony of, uh, of, of characteristics and uh, this is just a little bit a little bit one dimensional shall we say anyway let's see what the power gives us There's a little bit more citrus on, on the finish on this and in combination with the alcohol does kind of cleanse the palate, shall we say. Um, but it's still an oak monster. Uh, it's sort of, you know, creamy, buttery, sort of corny, toffied. Um, there's a little bit of barley, but again, it just, it kind of lacks a bit of light and shade. It's, it's kind of like, mm, here I am, you know. Um, and, yeah, like I said, it's... It, the, the, the whiskey itself is, is the quality is pretty pretty damn good you know there's, there's no doubting that the uh, what's coming off those stills is pretty good and like I said you have to understand that that they love oak they love lots of oak character obviously um, and if it's you, you have to kind of like that style it's exactly the same as, as, as peated malts or sherry malts or things like that you have to kind of like that kind of style and for, but for me I love American oak whiskies, like I said, you know, you you well know that by now that my favourite uh, cask is uh, is an ex bourbon cask. Um, but for me, there's just too much cask, and it's just a little bit unbalanced for me. Okay, so let's move on to uh, the, uh, the the podium. So this is a uh, aged in ex. Um, American Oak, new and 
refilled, so let's see what now gives us on this end. A little bit more subtler on the oak, it has to be said. It's not quite so so obviously bourbony, it's not quite so corny and, and big and vanillaed. There's a little bit more of an edge to uh, the oak, but again, there is a lot of it. Um, there's some almost kind of mineral sort of notes um, and some citrus, which kind of balances up the, the, the sort of estery kind of... Um, almost kind of banana-y kind of notes, um, which has obviously got nothing to do with the wood. That's not a wood derivative, um, that's a fermentation derivative, but um, even so, the, the oak is still quite intense, um, although I think it does show a little bit better balance than um, uh, than the ex-Bourbon. It's still, it's still pretty damn chunky. Ah, see what the power goes. Yep, again, there's a little bit more freshness on the finish, a little bit more minerality, um, a bit more citrus, uh, and the alcohol combining with those two elements does give it a bit more of a, a fresh cleansing kind of finish. But again, it's very, very oaky. Um, that oak is quite creamy, almost kind of clotted cream kind of character. Um, yes, there's a bit more barley. Yes, it's possibly a little bit more balanced than the... Um, than the ex bourbon but again it's just all oak you know and uh, I mean, it, it's just a, a rather sort of one-dimensional I mean yes it's different to the ex bourbon there was a you know a, a definite difference between the obvious cast types that they're using but again I, I would l like to have seen a little bit less oak and a little bit more spirit character because it obviously has a lovely kind of character um, but it's it's just kind of you know hidden under under all that oak. But anyway, you know it's each to his own, as they say. Right. Okay. And finally, let's let's move on to the concert master. Uh, this is like I said, it's uh, uh, ex bourbon cast finished in port. Let's see what the nose goes. Yeah, okay, it's 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 a nice nose. There's it's a relatively subtle nose. I mean again there's a lot of oak, um, but it's kind of quite subtle if you see what I mean. Um it's a little bit of sort of, of juice uh, no not yeah, they're slightly juicy, it's more kind of tannic um coffee tannins, um soft tannins it has to be said. Um the, the, the port is quite sort of woody and quite forward and which is surprising given the kind of lack of colour but it's more about the the sort of the, the port wood itself rather than port winey kind of character if you see what I mean um, so I'm going to sort of hazard a guess that this is probably not fr fresh um, port casks. I'd imagine these are refilled port casks because I would expect a lot more whininess. Um, again there's some barley notes, there's a bit of vanilla. It's it, and it's quite again quite a chunky nose, um, quite malty um, and dense and um, again it, it doesn't quite have the lightness of, of the classic. Um, there's even a it's getting a little bit almost manure now, which is which is interesting. Um, yeah, I mean it's an intriguing nose. It's 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 an in, an interesting uh, interesting nose. Uh, I certainly don't think it's. Um, I, I'm kind of on the fence a little bit, I suppose, with this one. I sort of like it, and I sort of don't like it. If you see what I mean, I hope that makes sense. It's kind of. Yeah, it's 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 okay, um, and this, that seems to be sort of like you know, uh, I mean, yeah, I don't as you probably as you well know, I don't tend to score whiskies unless I'm um, judging them in a competition. If I'm tasting whiskies, it's either 
yes, that's incredibly good, I want to buy that, or um, it's okay, I probably wouldn't buy it, or it's bloody awful, I'm not buying it. You know, that's three, that's the easiest way of sort of, of you know, of, of describing sort of uh, whiskey, in, in, my, in my opinion. Um, with regards to sort of grading whiskey and you know I think this is in the okay kind of camp it's pleasant again like I said I think the balance is obviously more skewed towards the cask um, getting a bit of gooseberry gooseberry where the hell is that coming from I don't know um, anyway let's, uh, let's taste it shall we Oh, I said, bit of a dry finish. Not too bitter, just a little bit. Nicely bitter. Um, it's got a almost kind of rose petally kind of uh, character. Um, not quite sort of toshin like rose petal, but certainly sort of in that kind of area. There's some lovely juicy sweet um, red fruits. It's a bit perfumed. It's a bit, mm, you know, um, and it's quite dry as well. Like I said, there's a lot of tan in the tan is quite soft, but it's still very dry, and the finish is quite dry. Um, it kicks off with the American oak, and it's more. The, the American oak seems to be more like the American well, oak in the, um, the podium bottling than the ex bourbon oak. Um, it's quite creamy, um, and but the, the the port kind of comes in quite quickly. And yes, like I said, it's got some nice wood notes um, and some tannins, and it's got some good structure to it. It's a little bit dry on the finish for me, and. Um, Again, I don't think it's going to change my opinion of it being other than, you know, okay. Okay, so let's sum today's episode of the show up. Well, I think the Cavalan range as a whole is pretty good. Uh, I don't think you can question the quality of it. I think it's just at the end of the day, I think certain... Uh, whiskies in that particular range are obviously going to appeal to certain people um, and that's not to say that you know I'm right and you're wrong if you particularly like one of them that I'm not quite so keen on you know it we all have different palettes they're all attuned differently um, but I, I think the one thing we can certainly agree on the quality of the spirit that the Yan Shan distillery is producing is absolutely fantastic and you know what the classic just does it for me. It is just absolutely wonderful. It's harmonious, it's elegant, it's a whiskey that on paper, like I said, shouldn't work, but it does. Uh, and it just, that just showcases the, A, the brilliance of the distillery and B, the brilliance of, of the blender or the master blender. I think that is just absolutely fantastic. Um, the King Car Conductor, well, yeah, okay, it's okay. It's, it's a good whiskey. It's, I wouldn't say it's an upgrade over the classic. Um, it it certainly has some resemblance to the classic, but it just doesn't quite have the freshness. But it has a, a deeper, maltier kind of character. The ex bourbon oak is probably, I hate to say it, but possibly the most disappointing whiskey in this particular lineup, and that's only because I love the Solist. Uh, the Solist is, is my is my favourite, the, the Solist X Bourbon I should say, is, is my favourite bottling of theirs and it is just sublime and, and really this doesn't kind of like do it justice shall we say. Um, the, the Podium, yeah okay slightly better balanced than, than the um, than the X Bourbon but, and again it's okay, it's, it's deep, it's multi, it's got some character um and you may well sort of disagree with me on this um my, my perceptions of it but at the end of the day uh, i just keep coming back to the classic and it's just, just absolutely gorgeous and the concert master again you know balanced a lot of oak which is kind of par for the course obviously with with the cabalan range again it's okay it doesn't excite me i don't sort of 
get all kind of mm, when, when tasting it it's just an, another one of those okay whiskies um, uh, but you know putting it all into context like I said I think that the, the range is very very good I think the quality is exceptionally good can't argue with that um, and just for me the kind of the classic just 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 does it just ticks all my boxes shall we say so so that's it that's this week's episode of the show in the bag I um, I hope I'm guessing that you can probably find the Cavalan whiskies in your local areas hopefully you know all the guys that watch uh, from uh, other countries aside from from the UK so if you can and it is affordable just, just buy the classic I mean that is just just absolutely stunning so Anyway, uh, all that's kind of left to say is, uh, well, I haven't actually got anything, well, there's a, a dribble left in here, so uh, good afternoon and good ramming. <laughs>